I have a tangerine tree, and we like tangerines. Tangerines are like nature's candy that it provides to us via a vibrantly coloured growth that forms on a tree after an insect has played with its reproductive organs. But we've got a problem. Rats. They also like tangerines, and they're eating them all before we can get to them. And that's what this video is going to be all about today. So Australia was once a continent that was free of common rats. Now there are so many here, if you filled an Olympic-sized swimming pool with them, just be f***ing gross. How are you going to get them in there? Are you going to put them in there dead? But that also means that there are a lot running around the neighbourhood because there's a low demand on rats for filling swimming pools. And there's lots in our backyard and they're eating all of our tangerines. That's a problem because we like to eat them. We don't want to eat the rats, we want to eat the tangerines, just to be clear. Alright, so the problem we've got is the rats always go into the tree and they're always taking our freshest tangerines. They go for the ripest, freshest ones every single time and then they'll half eat them. Then they'll leave these hollowed shells on the tree that we'll just find an empty tangerine husk. Then they'll half eat them just to rub it in our face and then let's move on to get another, another fresh one. To try and stop them, like most people suggest, I've tried baits and traps with mixed success. I don't really like using baits, but most of the time they don't even work anyway. The rats become weary and go straight for the fresh fruit. We've tried rat traps as well, but most of the time the rats outsmart them. Like look at this guy here. He already knows that the baits taste like shit compared to the tangerine tree. And then with a nice offering of sweet chocolate hazelnut butter, he's definitely keen. He comes over, he can smell something nice. Yeah, puts his foot up, has a little taste. Just knocks that over. Yep, tastes good. And yeah, I've even had to make my own insect and snail repelling pedestal because there's so many pests in the backyard causing havoc. Just test out the platform a little more. Oh, a little fright there. And nom 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 nom. And the trap doesn't even work. So what happens is if you set it too lightly, they test it out, it goes off, it scares them and they never go near it again. And then if you set it too tight, you get this situation where he just gets a free feed of sugar and fat. Now, you might be wondering why I don't use my tripwire arrow trap concept that I made in another video, but obviously this is a bit too dangerous to actually set up in a backyard with kids and other animals about, especially in a tree. Plus, it's going to get me first. I did consider the idea though of using the upgraded version of this concept, which was a 50 arrow per second rapid array. But we're still using this one to make breakfast in the morning. So, in trying to work out a solution, I considered what our immediate goal actually is, and that is a temporary quick fix just to allow us to store the fruit in the tree until we're ready to harvest it. Because every night that passes, the rats make considerable progress in destroying what fruit is remaining. Now, I have casually observed in the past that when I run out into the backyard like a crazy man with a headlamp flashing about and shaking all the trees, all the rats would leave the fruit tree and even the backyard, not returning for at least an hour sometimes. If I did this all night, we would be able to keep the rats at bay until we're ready to harvest the fruit. So, the idea to make a machine to simulate me shaking the tree and flashing my light around. Ideally, this would happen every half hour or so, and it also needs to be able to shake the tree enough to scare the rats away, but not too much that it knocks the fruit out of the tree. And we have to do it with crap that I already have laying around the house and shed. So, the plan. Climb high up in the tree, tie a rope between two of the flexible branches high in the tree, then tie another rope in the middle, and that goes down to the trunk. Then somewhere on the trunk, we'll have an electric motor. And on that electric motor, there's this big thing here, which is a crank arm, and we tie that rope onto that crank arm. And then that'll pull this rope up and down which will make these branches go in and out and then kind of shake the whole tree and then all of the little rat mother will off out of the tree. So hopefully the motor doesn't, you know, catch on fire and send fire into the tree, which would then spread to our house. This would be bad. And then the house is on fire. And then there's little burning rats running around the neighborhood setting all of the neighborhood on fire so that's what we don't want but we're not looking at what we don't want we're looking at what we do want and that's this motor the first item we are going to use is one of my favorite devices which is a car windscreen wiper motor i originally got this one from a guy who removed it because he thought wipers were too repetitive and distracting these are good because they've got a fair bit of torque and they turn quite slowly 
This one already has an arm attached to it because my dad and I used it to mount a camera on a land yacht back in 1999. Yeah, times were hard before GoPros were invented, but this is perfect. It already has an exhaust clamp attached to it, which was used to clamp onto the mast of the land yacht. This would be great to grip onto the branches of the tree of various sizes. I then welded up a simple crank that will attach to the windscreen wiper motor. To determine the length, I just based this on the general vibe of it, and we'll see how that works out. I've also put some threaded rod on there just to try and get the cable clear of the movement of the arm. We can then bolt this onto the spline of the windscreen wiper motor and tighten that up. Then if we throw 12 volts at this thing, we should get some nice crank movement. Little zappy zap with the wires and we have some movement going. This is a little bit faster than what I wanted. So if we try the other wire, that should be a lower speed setting. Nope, that's much faster. For a bit of light, just for now, I've got this 12 volt LED, which I have weatherproofed with a kid's medicine cup. So if we chuck this in parallel with the power going to the motor, we should have a little bit of light when the motor turns on. To attach to the crank, a mate gave me a bunch of cables with the ends already terminated. I think this will be perfect because it'll be less likely to tangle than a rope would and the eyelet on the end will allow it to move freely on the threaded rod. I've then bolted this between some nice big washers to become a nice dodgy linkage. For the control side of this whole setup, I knew I wanted the tree to shake for about 10 seconds and I wanted that to happen every half an hour or so. But then I wanted the light to come on as well and I wanted that to stay on for about 15 minutes and then turn off. So it was like if I was out in the backyard. A quick solution to that requirement is to dust off the original cat water spray repellent from 2011. This has a little 12 volt timer module and it's already set to that time as well. It's a little bit weathered from sitting out in the elements all those years ago, but it still should work fine. I guess the worst case scenario is fire. This board will run off a 12 volt power pack. However, if I plug this in now, it'll turn on for 10 seconds and that would be it for the night. So a quick way to get this cycle to repeat is to simply use an outlet timer like this. I've set this to turn on for 15 minutes and then off for 15 minutes. So when it turns on, the light will turn on for 15 minutes and the tree shaker will run for 10 seconds and then the whole thing will turn off for 15 minutes and then the cycle will repeat during the cat and rat hours. Then we've got a 12 volt battery to power the windscreen wiper motor and a big long ass cable to reach out into the garden. With all of these bits together, we can now throw some power at it to see if it works. Ah, ah. Is it working? Yep. <laughs> it's time to take all this crap outside into the backyard and rig it up in the tree. First I climbed the tree and stuck the ropes in it. Meanwhile the tree stuck its thorns in me. Forgot about that bit. Then I attached a cable to the middle of this and draped it down to the ground. I then found the perfect lower section of branch that I could clamp the windscreen wiper motor onto. I wrapped an old piece of wetsuit neoprene around this just so the bark doesn't get damaged, which could possibly make the rest of the branch go sad emoji. I tightened up the nuts and made sure the crank arm wasn't in a position where it would hit anything while it was spinning around, which could make the whole device self-destruct. Just give it a little shake, make sure it's secure. Yep, nice and dodgy. We can now put our cable onto the end of the arm. But first I'll just shake this a bit longer. Yep, definitely nice and secure. Yeah, I'll just, just check it again, I guess, and check that again. And then it's just a case of bolting the cable onto the crank, leaving just a little bit of slack for adjustment. I have then hung the shitty medicine cup LED light over a branch, and then just kind of jammed the wires into the connectors that are going to be feeding power to our wiper motor. Then we can run the cable through the garden to our super advanced control system. We are now ready to go and can give it its first test. Okay, the big moment. Yeah, it's turning and the light is on. It looks like the cable is a little bit too loose though to get some nice tension on those branches at the top. So I've made a few adjustments, tightened it up a bit, and considering how low powered our medicine cup LED light is, I thought a better option would be to go for a high powered LED four wheel drive light bar. I've then suspended this from the tree by some string and then tied an additional rope between this and the cable. So the light rotates back and forth. So the rats think a furious Craig is running around in the backyard with his head spinning 360 degrees. It's looking and sounding good. The branches are shaking about and making a lot of noise. 
but it's not shaking too much to cause the fruit to fall out of the tree. And even our loosely fitted washers on the end of the crank are also adding to the craziness to give our rats a nice little scare from the tree. I've also set up a pan tilt zoom camera so we can get some nice close ups of the tree to see what's going on. And there we go, there's our full controller setup, including some power stuff and wires there, a battery charger to keep the battery chopped up. And we have wires all over the ground to make it look nice and busy, like something important is going on, which it is. And then in true cat repellent style, we have some waterproofing on the circuit board. So now you know how to set up a tree shaker rat repellent, but does it work? Let's test it out. For this first night of testing, to get some insight into whether it actually does anything, I've set it to be triggered manually when I hit a switch, so we can wait for the rats to actually be present in the tree to see if the repellent persuades them to move on. It's almost completely dark outside. The light that you can see is invisible infrared that's being emitted by the cameras. You can get a rough idea here where the pan tilt zoom camera is as I move it around hunting for any rats that might be in the tree. It is now about 15 minutes after sunset and we have our first bit of rat activity. The little bugger is casually strolling down the fence. After hanging around in the shadows, watching if the coast is clear, about an hour later he's finally making a move for the tree, but he's being pretty cautious as he negotiates the branches. Now maybe it's just me, but here it looks a little bit like the tree's taking a dump, with some diamonds stuck in the end. Yeah, we've all been there. He knows there's been a disturbance in the force, plus it's likely he's noticed the big weird cable and electric motor in the tree. Of course, he has ignored all his previous chewed tangerines and he's going for the ripest stuff. He's got his hands in there, hooked over the edge. Nyam, 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 nyam. Just munching away. It looks like he's talking. Nyam, 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 nyam. Ah, how many fingers they got? Three? I don't know. You know, he hasn't got a thumb sucked in. Have to eat with both your hands like that. Yeah, lick all your fingers. Ah, it's gross. I mean, we all have to eat. But you're a threat to humans and native species, so I don't like you. Let's test this thing out. I've got the remote switch in hand and have roughly framed the camera up to see where he goes. And three, two, one, tree shaker time. At first I thought citrus stealing scrabbles here had completely left the tree, but if you look closely you can see his dirty little rat tail. He's perched himself up higher in the tree. It's definitely given him a good scare, but it looks like the repellent itself has blocked his only escape path, so he's quietly holding his ground, trying to work out what the threat is and hoping it will pass. Once we worked out what was going on, we get him back in our sights. I then hit the tree shaker button again. And it looks like he just keeps scampering around within the same branch. Really, this is a pretty good example of why they are such successful sneaky little f**ks. Compared to a mouse, which would just frantically dart all over the place, these guys have a hiding behaviour that is more in line with humans. They seem to have a good understanding of when to sneak around slowly, and also when their position has become compromised, and when to sprint. So I left it for a while, and because he hasn't left the branch, he's come back to the tangerine once he thought the humans had gone. We hit it again, and there was a similar result. He just hid in the darkness before returning to the tangerine. This happened a couple more times, then eventually I went out there to see if everything was operating okay and to scare him completely out of the tree. After this, I put the tree shaker repellent into automatic mode so the light would remain on for 15 minutes after each tree shake, and then left this running all night. In reviewing the footage, no rats returned to the tree that night. It seems once they were out of the tree, they were too scared to go back up their main entry path. So, was the whole project a success? In the end, it was set up for about four weeks, until eventually the motor died from water getting in. Turns out, there's a drain hole in these motors that should be pointed downwards. So then I had to perform surgery on that, and then I didn't get around to setting it back up. As far as repelling the rats, it did actually seem to work for about two weeks. The fruit appeared untouched. But then something interesting happened. A rat repellent here suffered from a problem that it turns out is common with many non-contact animal deterrents, and that's habituation. 
So I noticed on the camera early in the evenings when a rat would be trying to enter the tree, because of the consistency of the sound and the shaking action, they became climatized to it. They would just hold their position until it turns off and then continue on their way to the tangerines. I think something like this could work if it was more randomized and you know, it just varied what it did, how long it did it for, the noises, but it was the exact same noise every time. The washers making their noise and the, the windscreen wiper motor going. The other problem was my kids would be woken up in the middle of the night with bright lights flashing through the window, thinking they're gonna get abducted by some alien spacecraft. Overall, it was an interesting experiment. We saw some rats run away. We got to eat some tangerines at the end and I just put a bunch of stuff in a tree, which was fun and some wires. And that's all you can really want in life. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Just something casual, reflecting on a bit of a build and yeah. Let me know what you think. Subscribe if you haven't. Thumbs up and all that stuff. Maybe leave a comment. Let me know if you think they're tangerines or tangellos or something else. They could be something else. My name's Craig Turner. YouTube channel is Turner81. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video.